Srimad Bhagavad Gita, as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Chapter 7, Text 16. Chatur Vidha Bhajante Maam Jana Sukritin Arjuna Artho Jignasur Artharti Yani Cha Bharatar Shabha O best among the Bharatas Four kinds of pious men begin to render devotional service unto me. The distressed, the desirer of wealth, the inquisitive, and he who is searching after, who is searching for knowledge of the Absolute. Purport. Unlike the miscreants, these are adherents of the regulative principles of the scriptures. And they are called Sukritinaha, or those who obey the rules and regulations of scriptures, the moral and social laws, and are more or less devoted to the Supreme Lord. Out of these there are four classes of men, those who are sometimes distressed, those who are in need of money, those who are sometimes inquisitive, and those who are sometimes searching after knowledge of the Absolute Truth. These persons come to the Supreme Lord for devotional service under different conditions. These are not pure devotees because they have some aspiration to fulfill in exchange for devotional service. Pure devotional service is without aspiration and without desire for material profit. The Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu defines pure devotion thus. Anyabhilashita shunyam Jnana karma dhyanavritam anukulena krishnanu shilanam bhakti rutama. One should render devote transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. When these four kinds of persons come to the Supreme Lord for devotional service, and are completely purified by the association of a pure devotee, they also become pure devotees. As far as the miscreants are concerned, for them devotional service is very difficult because their lives are selfish, irregular, and without spiritual goals. But even some of them, by chance, when they come in contact with a pure devotee, also become pure devotees. Those who are always busy with fruitive activities come to the Lord in material distress, and at that time, associate with pure devotees and become in their distress devotees of the Lord. Those who are simply frustrated also come sometimes to associate with the pure devotees and become inquisitive to know about God. Similarly, when the dry philosophers are frustrated in every field of knowledge, they sometimes want to learn of God and they come to the Supreme Lord to render devotional service and thus transcend knowledge of the impersonal Brahman and the localized Paramatma and come to the personal conception of Godhead by the grace of the Supreme Lord or his pure devotee. On the whole, when the distressed, the inquisitive, the seekers of knowledge and those who are in need of money are free from all material desires and when they fully understand that material remuneration has nothing to do with spiritual improvement, they become pure devotees as long as such a purified stage is not attained. Devotees in transcendental service to the Lord are tainted with fruitive activities, the search for mundane knowledge, etc. So one has to transcend all this before one can come to the stage of pure devotional service. In this verse, Krishna discusses pious people. The word is used is sukritinaha, people who have done some good works. There's another term also, punyavan, one who has got punya. So these two terms are often seen as uh, synonymous 
uh, punya is generally understood to mean to mean uh, material piety as distinguished from uh, pure devotional service. So pious people come to Krishna and impious people don't come to Krishna. Impious people, they won't come to Krishna. Natiyana Krishna paratasvato vamito bibhadyeta grihavratanam adanta gobhir vishatanta misram punaf punas charvita charvananam Persons who have decided that they're not going to be Krishna conscious don't become Krishna conscious. <laughs> even by their own so-called spiritual endeavors, even if they get well advised to do so. They may have so many philosophies, but their real aim of life is simply to gratify the senses. And in this way, they chew that which has already been chewed and go to hell. Well, pious people, they're different. They, they have some inclination toward God at some level. And therefore, among devotees, we often talk about pious people. We, we, we went to a place, we went to a certain town, we found there were many pious people. Such and such a person is a pious person. It doesn't mean they're a pure devotee, but they are naturally inclined to be favorable toward devotees. Uh, and to be open to Krishna consciousness or to, without even thinking about it much, they'll join in the dancing and the kirtan. They'll happily take prasadam and enjoy it, whereas people are impious. They don't like to take prasadam at all. So this is what I call a pious person. I mean, generally it's someone who's very simply and naturally accepts Krishna consciousness or simply and naturally is inclined to turn toward God. Uh, recently I saw some statistics which was uh, which were put out by atheists in their ongoing battle with anti-atheists. I don't know if we should call those the Christians who are, who are combating the atheists, theists. They're, they're very uh, very undeveloped theism. But anyway, that's another point altogether. So, so uh, this presentation showed that <clears throat> or it brought out the point that often theists they say that, well, we have many scientists who are also theists, so it's not that science is, makes you automatically atheistic, or they, they, they profess that, that we have many scientists on our side. As if to justify that, actually, it's propaganda against the generally propagated idea that people who know science, they're more intelligent and they're more educated. And so they don't believe in God. It's only stupid people who believe in God. So this atheistic propaganda said that, all, yes, although some scientists may believe in God, the great, they gave statistics that the great majority don't, and that if you go a higher, a higher level of scientists, the higher level you get among them, the less percentage of theists there are among them. So therefore the conclusion is that the more intelligent you are, you're the less likely you are to believe in God and there may be one or two very intelligent people but who do believe in God, but anyway that's just uh, an aberration. They're just... It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a, uh, it happens in evolution, then there may be some strange things that come out also, but the general, the general course is that uh, people who are more intelligent, they don't believe in God. 
Now, of course, this begs the question that the education itself is atheistic. So the more educated you are in atheistic education, the more likely you are going to be to be atheistic. Well, for instance, we find that among the Vaishnavas, who are definitely theistic in the best sense of the term, um, there are many highly educated people. And if people are educated in this, in this intelligent system of knowledge to understand God, then they won't be atheistic. It's not, it's not that big, because you're more educated and you're more intelligent then that, that you're necessarily atheistic. It depends what kind of education you get also. So, the modern society is very complex. So complex. And it's not surprising if people become more atheistic, and especially they go through so many years of school in which explicitly or implicitly the whole tenor is atheistic. Uh, and no one, no one gives the, 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 what they're given the knowledge at school. They're, they're, it's presented or oh, science. It's so wonderful. And this is this is the real, this is real intelligence. And when it comes to religion, no one presents anything intelligently, at all. And it's not surprising if people associate intelligence with skepticism about everything. Except science, they should be skeptic about science also. Which, actually, the uh, the Vedantic position, I say Vedantic because it's not only Vaishnava. There in Vedanta, there are two main divisions. There is Advaita and, well, for want of a better term, Dvaita. Well, it's that's oversimplistic to say that. Anyway, let's say Vaishnavas and Mayavadis because some of the Vaishnavas, their philosophy, their Shud, uh, Shudadvaita, Vallabh's philosophy, and Vishishtadvaita is Ramanu, so they, they profess to be Advaita. They're also Advaita Vadis, according to their own philosophy. So, uh, all classes of Vedantists, not only Vedantists, but uh, generally they, they but the, the Followers of the Vedas, they, they, they are skeptical about any system or any method, any epistemology, except Shabda Praman, especially the Vedantas. They, they, we accept because they say that within what would be the modern scientific system, it depends on Pratyaksha and Anuman. Without Pratyaksha and Anuman, are also accepted by. Vaishnavas and by, by Vedantists, but only as supports to Shabda Praman. And, and Pratyaksha and Anuman, they are less uh, reliable sources of knowledge. And uh, without Shabda, you're definitely going to be in trouble following these. Pratyaksha means sensory perception, Anuman means hypothesis based on sense perception. What you've seen, you hypothesize about it. There is smoke on the hill. Well, that's another. That's Well, that's a kind of... Uh, there's smoke on the hill, so that where there is smoke, there is fire. So, uh, the, the Vedic system is skeptical of the, the, so the modern scientific system from the outset, because of Brahm Pramad, Vipralipsa, Karna, Patav. The mistakes are there of uh, the, the defects of Pratyaksha, that one tends to make mis mistakes, one tends to be confused or illusioned. Uh, Brahm Pramad, one tends to cheat. Oh, scientists don't cheat, do they? <clears throat> <laughs> wouldn't expect these you know, scientists, you know, they're very noble people, they, know, they wouldn't cheat or fudge their figures to get a research project, research funding, uh, 
and uh, Karna Patav, the, the senses are imperfect anyway. Yes. So, uh, in so many ways, the scientific system, which is uh, people are people who think they're trained in science, they're skeptical about what they what is what they perceive as being non-scientific, but they're not skeptic about science. But they should be if if they just think a little deeper. But they don't get to think that deeply because they don't come to the Vedic knowledge. So, uh, generally we see that simple people, they're more open to Krishna consciousness, which suggests that it's the natural tendency of the living being to be pious, but modern education kills it. Not education per se, but modern education, which teaches one to be doubtful about everything, which puts oneself in the position of God, because one becomes oneself becomes the arbiter of everything in that case. So there are, there are many faults if we start to think about it or discuss it uh, at a little deeper level than and, and just this uh, atheist present. You see, most scientists are atheistic, and the more higher level they are, the more atheistic they are. But but. Uh, that's based on the premise that that's that this education is that it, it actually reveals the nature of reality and that it, it, one is actually more intelligent by being more educated well in one sense you are in one sense you are if you're someone who's an atomic physicist it's not everyone that can become an atomic physicist you have to be intelligent diligent and be trained over many years. One has to be a higher, at a higher level of intelligence than most people. But the intelligence that uh, is concentrated on the wrong thing is not very intelligent. Just like if, if your house is on fire and you're still looking through your microscope and saying, well, I'm making some wonderful discoveries here. In the meantime, you're going to burn down with your whole laboratory. Well, that's what's going on. The, the scientists are making all wonderful discoveries. In the meantime, Janvam Ritu Jiravyadi, their birth, death, old age, and disease, they are in the, in the, they're being crushed by the wheels of time. But they don't see Pashanapina Pashati. They, they're so busy investigating <laughs> uh, what is ultimately superfluous. They take this world so seriously. It's it's like you know doing a PhD on uh, the, the, the the latrine or something like that. A, you go into someone's house and the, and they have a beautiful house and then the thing you're most interested in is is the latrine and you put all the all the uh, emphasis all your attention. Oh, what kind of latrine have you got? Oh, what a wonderful! Oh, beautiful! Perfectly designed. Let's do so. Let's do a project here to study it, neglecting the whole of the rest of the house. So that's what materialists are doing because they're cockroaches in the commode, and therefore they think this this toilet is the ultimate, the be all, the end all, and there's nothing beyond this. Beyond this toilet, there's no, there's nothing that exists, and I'm a highly I'm a highly educated cockroach, so don't argue with me. What do you mean? There's 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 out there beyond this. What do you mean? There's nothing beyond. What are you talking about? Prove it. So uh, simplicity by which one can take to devotional service. Otherwise, without that, one gets in trouble. As everyone always does in this material world, and then he blames God, or he says, "Well, let's prove there's no God, because if there was God, he wouldn't he wouldn't make troubles for me. He wouldn't make life. God means all good, and therefore, d despite the fact that I'm killing animals and exploiting people and cheating people, and either in this life or a previous life, but surely God will do everything nice for me. <laughs> yeah, so they they reject. There can't be any God." 
if there was any God, he wouldn't put me, I, I wouldn't be in this trouble. And when things go well, they, for them, they say, well, what is, believing in God? Well, I don't believe in God. See, I'm, I'm doing well. I don't believe in God. I don't need any God to help me. That's the atheistic attitude. Whereas a, a, a person of theistic mentality, when things go well, he doesn't become puffed up and he thinks it's the mercy of God. And when things go bad, he also thinks it's the mercy of God. God is helping me to realize that this material world is not a nice place. He's given me a slight punishment for all the bad things that I've done. That's how a simple person thinks. He doesn't reject God because uh, he's suffering in this world. So, Sharalata, Bhakti Siddhan Sosvark Thakur says, Sharalata, simplicity is the first qualification of a Vaishnav. But that doesn't mean that one is stupid. It might mean that, in general, as we say, that pious people, we tend to see they are less educated, but that's a lot to do with the whole modern educational system, rather than an intrinsic quality of of the conditioned soul is that that if they're stupid they're pious and they believe in God is not necessarily true at all although it might seem true in the modern milieu in which education is to turn you into a demon so um, simplicity is required just simplicity we generally think of it as a as a not a good quality, but it is, a, it is a good quality even for intelligent people in which they can see, they can grasp the essence. There are so many complex discussions, but someone can just summarize it all in, in a very simple, straightforward and clear way and grasp the basic principles. Instead of always uh, getting hung up on some Detail. So that kind of simplicity is good. But it's uh, why we say that simplicity is the first qualification of a Vaishnava to accept. Yes, well, we're all controlled. That means there must be a controller. Okay, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so that simplicity, that's good. But one should not be credulous in the sense that one shouldn't accept too easily everything otherwise uh, anyone can come along, along come along and say well oh there's some pious people well they, they advertise themselves well I'm God actually and people believe they're pious but they're not very intelligent whereas an atheistic person would be skeptical and say, well, God, wait a minute. Uh, how can you be God? You're just an ordinary person. So we should be simple enough to accept that there is the Supreme Lord. At the same time, we shouldn't be so simple that we And to think that blind faith is a good quality. Faith is a quality, no doubt. Shadhavan. What is that? That word comes up so many times. Shadhavan Jan Hoi Bhakti Adhikari. One who is faithful has. He is eligible to take to devotional service. Shadhavalabhadhegyanam. One who is faithful can attain knowledge. That's true in any field, even in the field of mundane science. Ah. Uh, one should be simple, but not... Uh, that doesn't mean that one suspends one's intelligence. One realizes that, the, the, that God is beyond our intelligence to understand, but not totally and wholly. That's almost like the uh, Islamic understanding of Allah. It's just so great and so beyond your ability to understand. Then who do you pray to? And then... And uh, wh what does it mean to believe in Allah? 
you don't even suppose you can't even begin to think about him because he's so beyond him or you there's no word him because he's he's not masculine or feminine or neuter <laughs> so becomes so different that's like extreme dualism that there's no, there can be no relationship between the between God and us so it almost comes to the point of atheism extreme dualism almost comes to the point of impersonalism because he then you, he's not accepted as a person in the in the way that we are persons we are persons also and our personality takes from his personality the other night in Secunderabad Sunday night this um, one after the class one devotee asked me that well, shouldn't we just accept our guru? If our guru is in parampara and we just follow, but they don't consider this verse: "Evang parampara praptam evang raja shio viduhu sakale nehamahata yogo nashta parantapa." This knowledge was received in parampara in, in guru disciple succession, but in course of time it became spoiled and lost. Well, how does that happen? If you just think that every how, what is parampara? There's a guru, and that means there's a disciple. And the disciple later becomes guru to someone else who becomes a disciple. And it goes on like this. So, how does it become spoiled? It means at some point that someone says something different to his guru. <laughs> and therefore, although he's officially initiated, the parampara is lost. <laughs> because the message has been changed. So, if we just presume simplistically, oh, okay, Prabhupada, all right, we accept he's a pure devotee, imparampara. So, if my guru is initiated by Prabhupada, he must be imparampara. But they never consider that, or they never read Prabhupada's books, maybe they're too busy reading other books, and some journeys and all this kind of thing, in which there's no actual spiritual knowledge. And... Uh, they just presume that, well, my guru's Prabhupada's disciple. Therefore, whatever he's doing is approved by Prabhupada. It must be the same, must be the same as what Srila Prabhupada said. And in this way, a, a lazy, overly simplistic approach by which we are liable to be cheated. So. What do, you, what do you do? I mean, we're supposed to... That's the quality. Guru Mukha Padmava Kachitete Kariya Aika Ana Kariya Mane Asha We should accept the words of the Guru. The, word, the, the words from the lotus mouth of the Guru. We should ex make that one with our heart and not desire anything else. But, uh, on the other hand, if the Guru tells us, okay, let's all go to the disco together. And for disco dance. I mean, he might say, let's go and preach there. It's not generally the best place to preach, but it's possible. He could, but if he tells, let's all go there and dance to the disco music, you never know. It might be coming. We already have Bollywood music at Rathiatra. We don't know what will be next. Mm. then uh, the disciple should be intelligent enough to, if he's received the knowledge, he maybe even received the knowledge from the guru at one point, and then the guru himself takes a strange turn. Or he may, may have actually read Srila Prabhupada's books in which they see uh, directions such as Anu Kulyasya Sankalpa Prati Kulyasya Varjanam. And they may say, well, Guruji, uh, how is going to a disco dance how is that favorable for devotion? It seems to be unfavorable. And one should not be so simple as to think that, well, Guruji went to the disco dance, so we should also. And he wants us to go, so he'll be pleased. Or a very common, this is, well, not very common, but not, let's say not uncommon, misuse of this principle is that you have to please the guru. So, you have a beautiful young daughter, and you can please the guru by or your wife. Not unheard of. You can. I didn't say the whole. I didn't. You can fill in the rest yourself. 
you all know it's not unheard of. This uh, Guru Prasadi, that you, when someone gets married, then you can't enjoy something. First of all, you have to offer to the Guru. Only afterward you can enjoy. So your wife becomes Guru Prasadi. So that's uh, a misuse of that principle. How do you know? You, you, we shouldn't be... If we're going to accept a guru, we shouldn't be skeptical. Well, we're advised to see carefully before we accept a guru. <laughs> but it may be also that someone is giving good advice and later they change. Then what do you do? What, sh what should you do? In well, that's stated. Guru Apiya. Avaliptasya kaya kaya ajanataha. Upanna pratipanasya paritiago vidhiyate. If one is even a guru, but if he gives the wrong instructions, is not following properly himself, or doesn't know how to properly instruct, then he should be completely given up. And this is the, uh, that's the general direction, the nuances of which have been discussed to some extent by Srila Narahari Sharkar in his Sri Krishna Bhajaramrita. So, uh, how can one know? I mean, the attitude should be just to absorb what the Guru says. Well, there's another Guru. <laughs> the, the Guru who we see is supposed to represent the Chaita Guru, the Guru in the heart. So we should be in contact with the Guru in the heart. It means Krishna also. That doesn't mean that we just have our own fantastic mental speculation, uh, but that we, that we see Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, not Guru, 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 and not Shastra, 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 and not Sadhu, 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 but Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, and Krishna gives the intelligence, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam, Tesham Satata Yuktanang Bhajatang Priti Purvakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Mam Upayanti Te. If we are actually very serious to come to Krishna, Krishna helps us and gives us the intelligence, even if our Guru's intelligence is spoiled. Krishna gives us the intelligence by which we can come to Him. Even if someone was acting as a guru and he's saying all the right things and doing all the right things, but then changes and the disciple may be intelligent enough to understand. He's changed, he's not on the right path. He may change also, some, some policy or some attitude or even some uh, philosophical position. And that, that's, that's more subtle. Uh, but for instance, uh, we don't see nowadays in the Gorya Sampradaya Svakiyavadis, those who promote that Krishna is married to the gopis, that there were previously, and Jiva Goswami upholds Svakiyavad, whereas later Vishwana Chakravar Thakur corrects him, if you would, <laughs> and from that time the whole Gorya Sampradaya, Parakiyavad, is accepted that Krishna and the gopis they're not married so which is true both <laughs> uh, depends where you want to go in the spiritual world so it, it may be that even on some philosophical point that uh, one may change the position but the basic principle as Srila Prabhupada has described in this purport of the verse that we read today, Anyabhilashita Chunyam Gyana Kama Dyanavrita Manukulyana Krishna Nushi Bhakti Rutama of selflessness, complete de dedication to Krishna. Uh, that is the basic principle. And from that will come Sat Siddhanta, the proper understanding. And if one is not fixed on this then the improper understandings will, may come. Within Sad Siddhanta there may be sub Siddhantas, mixing an English prefix with an important Sanskrit word. There may be sub Siddhantas also. Just like Swakiyavad, Parakiyavad. There may be 
uh, both are acceptable. Or there may be devotees who see Lakshmi Narayana as supreme, or, the, or Rama supreme, and that it's not... Fil- if we discuss from the point of view of, of Rasavicha, then Gorias will definitely come out on top. We declare that. But it's not rejected. The, the Gorias of Radha Krishna, Paraki Abhav, that will come out on top, but it's not rejected at all within the realm of pure devotional service to accept Rama as one's life and soul. Sri Nate Janaki Nate Abheda Paramatmani Tatapi Mama Saravasvam Rama Kamala Lochanaha. This is uh, this is from Ramayan and it's quoted by Narottam Dash Thakur in his Prem Bhakti Chandrika, just after the Sanyabhilashita Shunyam, he quotes some Sanskrit verses in there also. He quotes Sanyabhilashita Shunyam also. So the, he, this is spoken by Hanuman. He says that Srinath, which means Narayana, or if you happen to be a Gorya, then you know that Srinath actually means Krishna. Uh, and Janakinath, Rama, Chandra, Dasharat, Sutta. They are the same non-different Supreme Person. But anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I'm all for Ram. I'm, I'm interested in Ram. So he's my all in all, my life and soul. So, that, uh, that may, that, that, Guru may change in some ways. He may, uh, emphasize different, but, but different things within Vaishnavism. But then the principle of pure devotional service, he, he never compromises on that or, or misrepresents it. And Krishna gives the intelligence to see that. It is recorded in the Bhagavatam, the same Bhagavatam that states Guru Devatatma that one should see Guru as, as just like God, Guru, Guru uh, and one's life and soul. Um, so that's in Bhagavatam, and it's Samastha Shastra, it's stated in all Shastras. Sarkshad Haridvena Samastha Shastra, Ayaruktastata Bhavyata Iva Sadhi. All these Shastras, all the great but the whole tradition, the whole Vedic culture is one of utmost reverence for Guru. It, it requires a kind of simplicity, just to. It requires faith. Simplicity means uh, implicit faith that here I am, there is transcendence, and the intermediary is Guru. And just if we surrender to Guru, then he'll take us to the other side. So it requires an implicit faith, which is. Uh, that requires some simplicity because you, we can't find out the spiritual world by our own, by scientific methods. We can't we can't find out spiritual existence. It requires faith that there is spiritual existence and that we can be elevated to that platform. But we need we need some help, and this is the system given to go via guru. So that uh, simplicity is required, but. At the same time, one has to uh, exercise one's intelligence. Generally, the intelligence one submits one's intelligence to be guided by the guru, which is which, which in the modern Western way of thinking, with all this idea of freedom and individuality, to them seems horrific. The idea that you should bow down to another human being—it just seems horrific. But that is the Vedic system, that one submits one's intelligence to the Guru. That doesn't mean that one turns off one's intelligence. The Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, one sees them all, they're all together in one line. They're, so if we see the, what appears to be a contradiction between Guru and Shastra, then we can go to the Guru and ask, what's going on here? And he, he may explain, or if, you, if we're not satisfied with the explanation, we can ask some more. 
And if we're still not satisfied with the explanation, we may think, well, the Guru's gone wrong. Uh, Krishna, it's, he was the Guru to Arjuna, and, and uh, Arjuna several times said to Krishna, okay, you're telling me all these things, but it doesn't seem to make sense. So, what's going on here? And then Krishna would explain, and Arjuna was... Uh, he wasn't such an easy person to convince. Arjuna didn't say, yes, 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 yes. He said, well, hmm, ah, ah, hmm, that doesn't seem right. And then Krishna explained, he said, it still doesn't seem right. <laughs> so Arjuna, he put various objections based on his misunderstanding of Shastra. You'll find that Arjuna used, used all these words, karma, Janma, Aparam Bhavato Janma. Uh, so, Arjuna, he asked Krishna, and Krishna explains everything to him. But uh, if Krishna was not a bona fide guru, or if Arjuna was not a bona fide disciple, then we might find that there's a rift between them. Uh, the guru rejects the disciple, or the disciple rejects the guru. The famous example of that is Bali Maharaj, who, re who rejected his guru. It's tremendous risk to reject your guru. Tremendous risk. The, the, the Shastra, that I, we, we're quoting this, uh, the guru should be rejected if he's not properly, but the general injunction of Shastra is that you sh one should have full faith and, and, and uh, follow and to reject a guru is, is it's worse than anything you can do. So there's a tremendous risk that Bali Maharaj took. But Krishna inspired him from within the heart. Because actually he had the formal guru of Shukracharya, but he was taking shiksha from who? Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, Prahlad Maharaj was in Parampara. Well, who was he initiated by? He was initiated by Narad when? When was he initiated by Narad? In the womb? How was he initiated? Initiation means tapa puna. You're supposed to put this hot symbols and then the tilak and then give a name. When was he initiated? Mantra, yeah. So in that sense he was initiated. There was no formal initiation. The, the essence he gave of spiritual knowledge. Otherwise he wasn't, formally he wasn't initiated. It was not possible that Narad formally initiated him. So, uh, Dali Maharaj, he understood what was right. He was, he was like Prahlad in the sense that uh, he was living among the demons, but he understood what was right. He was uh, secretly in his heart, he was maintaining the, the right understanding. But somewhat different also, because Prahlad, after all, was a small boy, whereas Bali was actually the leader of all the demons, and he'd, he'd led the charge up to the heavenly planets and take it, taken over. He was acting as the best demon in the history of, of de demonism. There wasn't much of a history at that time, because they hadn't, the universe hadn't been going on long. But uh, it's, a, it's a standard thing that the demons attack the devas, and the devas win, but this time Bali Maharaj won, so he was really phew, the best of all time. But in his heart, he was he was doing it as a duty, but he was actually a, a Vaishnava. So at great risk, he rejected his guru, but as a result, he attained Krishna. If he had not done, then he wouldn't have attained Krishna. So the principle Anukul Yasya Sankalpa Pratikul Yasya Varjanam is in every sphere, even one may reject one's guru, if necessary, to attain Krishna. Now, this is also often misused, and we find in the in the Gorya world, there's a lot of disciple poaching. It's not much going on now. It, it, there was a lot going on when there were uh, elderly Gorya Mat sannyasis traveling around the world and presenting themselves as more advanced than everyone else. And if you have to, if you're going to be Krishna conscious, you have to come to me. You won't get it through all these neophytes in Isko. Uh, that was the propaganda going on. So not much now, but uh, that may be misused. 
this idea of uh, you can reject your guru. One should be extremely cautious in such a matter. But, again, one should um, not be so simple that one is misled. So simplicity is a good quality. So, but to be too simple, <laughs> to, that one's simplicity is not tempered with intelligence, that is also dangerous. Krishna je bhaje she boro chotur. That's stated in the Krishna uh, Ashto Tarashatanama. Used to be famous in Bengal. Nowadays, Bengal means what is it? Naxa, bomb front on one side and Mamata on the other, and who cares about Krishna? And Muslims in East Bengal. So, uh, Mamata means Mamata Banerjee. No, actual Mamata, that's what we want. Mamata means a sense of highness, intense affection for Krishna. It happens to be the name of politician. So, uh, yeah, that simplicity in which we can just appreciate Krishna. Just like that story is there of the the cobbler and the brahmana. The brahmana was very sophisticated and knowledgeable and was worshipping God day and night, but he didn't believe that Narayana can put an elephant through the eye of a needle. Whereas the cobbler, who is engaged in filthy work, dealing with skins of animals, very low class, uneducated, he immediately accepted. Oh, when Narada told him that, oh, Narayana is putting an elephant through the eye of a needle, immediately accepted. Simplicity. And then I said, how can you believe? I, I don't believe it myself. I'm supposed to be the greatest devotee. Uh, how do you believe it? And he said, well, if he wants, he can do it. <laughs> I'm sitting underneath this tree, and every seed there's a tree. So he can put an elephant through the eye of a needle. Why not? Actually, he can do, because by... Uh, he can make the elephant so small it can go through, or he can make the needle so big, or, may, or adjust the sizes of them. He can do whatever he likes. Yeah, even if we don't understand. So, that simplicity, that actually... Uh, with that simplicity, then we can appreciate Krishna, and we can appreciate Krishna's pastimes, and... Generally, we see simple devotees, they like to hear Krishna's pastimes and the story of how Krishna does this and Krishna does that. And uh, But at the same time, they can be misled also. Very easily. So to be able to appreciate or to, to like to hear Krishna's pastimes is a very good quality. But to be misled, that's not a good quality. Mm. People who have more of mundane education, they actually need more of philosophical discussion because they can't accept Krishna Leela very easily and they may not even be so much attracted to it. Generally, if we go in the colleges, in India especially, and we start talking about science and then they become interested. We say, well, in the Vedas there's this there's this knowledge of science and that knowledge of science and this scientist said that about Krishna consciousness very favorably and then they oh they become very interested. If you tell them a scientist a famous scientist appreciates Krishna consciousness and they think, oh that's very good. <laughs> uh, they're so much enamored by science. So People who are more messed up, less simple, they need their doubts addressed. The kind of talk that I'm giving now is not the kind of talk that simple people would very much appreciate, probably. They say, well, come on, you know, they'd be asleep by now. Uh, but if there's stories of Krishna Leela, especially some stories we never heard before, then it becomes charming to all. But for those of us who are not so simple, <laughs> we need this kind of discussion so that we can become simple and relish Krishna Leela. 
so that we can uh, and when we need also it's, it's not, not always with discussed philosophy we can read Krishna book and he, hear about the pastimes of Krishna that is ultimately the goal of life to relish hearing about Krishna I have some notes about that also uh, yeah we should we should just be absorbed in hearing about Krishna isn't that a fact we should be absorbed in hearing about Krishna's wonderful pastimes Uttama Shloka Charitam Sarva Loka Sukhava the pastimes of Krishna Uttama Shloka the best shlokas are meant for describing him they, by, by hearing about his activities the whole world can become happy so shouldn't we just absorb ourselves in Krishna Leela yes we should but then shouldn't we be cautious also yes also so we also need to discuss philosophy we need to discuss that um both sides because bhakti means bhakti vedanta Krishna himself is vedanta krit he gave vedanta of course when I say the gopis they're not uh, they're not big vedantists we just want to be like the gopis but the gopis they are big vedantists they come to this world and write the shachandarbas and lagu bhagavatamrita and so many philosophical works But this, uh, we may say, yeah, well, okay, well, let them do that. Let them come to this world and write Lagu Bhagavatam. I'll just stay in the spiritual world and steal Krishna's lunchbox. We may say like that. But they come to this world and give us this knowledge so that we may take advantage of that. So that Bhidyate Hridayagantis Chidyante Sarva Sangshayaha this is required by hearing the Bhagavatam all the attachments in the heart will be pierced and the uh, doubts will be slashed so that's required therefore touch shradhadhana munio shradhadhana means with, with faith the faith is the, and simplicity faith and simplicity go together but touch shradhadhana munio Muni, the thoughtful person, should be faithful also. You may think, well, that's a contradiction, but no. Tachadhana muniyo jnana vairagya yuktaya pashantyatmani chatmanam bhaktya shuta grihitaya. The bhakti is received through the knowledge of Shastra by a f person who is both faithful and thoughtful. The two are not contradictory. They, they go together very well. Jnana Vairagya. Often we see devotees who are very simple and they like to hear Leela. But uh, there should be some Vairagya also. If they're actually so advanced that they're relishing Krishna Leela, then it shouldn't be that uh, after they go, they listen to Krishna Leela, they go home and watch the cricket on TV, which we often see. <laughs> that those who are very simple and they don't, they're not much interested in hearing philosophy they like to hear stories of Krishna but they don't manifest symptoms of actually being spiritually advanced that, that, it might seem that their relishing of the pastimes of Krishna is a sign of being spiritually advanced but then you have to see what happens when they go home <laughs> also it may be that people have they may appear to be spiritually advanced you see people they're relishing the kirtan they're really into it but but when the kirtan stops, we don't see that they're seriously concentrating their mind on Krishna and trying to become free from sense gratification. So, is it real ecstasy? Or isn't it? We should consider... Uh, yeah, Bhakti Vedanta... I had some other points. Where are those? Mm. 
many years ago, one of my god brothers told me that he said, "Well, you know, all this philosophical preachings. Well, why bother? I, I, I'm, he said, I concentrate on village people. They're simple. They can take to Krishna consciousness very easily, and they're. Uh, well, he, I'm paraphrasing a bit here. I, they can take to Krishna consciousness very easily. They're all spirit souls, so." They, they can, if you can get a lot of people going back to Godhead, then why why concentrate on all these difficult people? So that's that's one phase of preaching. Srila Prabhupada he he concentrated his he wanted to preach to everyone, but his his particular uh, focus was on. Uh, was on um, more in the more intelligent. His books were meant for intelligent and sincere people, with the idea that if the intelligent come, then everyone else will follow. It's the intelligent people who are spoiling the world through their education system and their uh, mass media and all this. So. Even if we preach to the simple people, and they'll they'll take to Krishna consciousness very nicely, but mostly they're still bewildered by the misleading propaganda that comes from the misled intelligent people, from the education system, from from the uh, mass media, and so we find that even though many simple people may come, but they, without philosophical understanding. They'll, their anarthas will remain. Their, their misunderstandings will remain. So even if people are very simple, it's not that they're simple and they, they'll take to Krishna consciousness very easily, but it doesn't mean that they don't have to have their misunderstandings straightened out. It's not that they're totally unintelligent, and their intelligence is misdirected. So that has to be, that has to be addressed also. So definitely... Uh, Definitely, we want the, the whole aim is to develop our heart's natural attraction to Krishna. But at the same time, we warn: fools rush in where angels fear to tread. The English saying that that uh, we we'll just march in, and then we'll march into the Rasalila and and uh, take it over. <laughs> but uh, but no, we we. We have to get the qualification, which means absolute purity. Absolute purity. And that is, the process is given to us. That is, vairagya vidya. It's not that being simple and then you just chant Hare Krishna, but then the anartas have to be removed also. And, and the, the prime means for or the, the essential process for doing that is by hearing we should hear so that we can distinguish between what is real and what is unreal. And that's what is there in Gita and Bhagavatam, and it may be in somewhat simplified form in, for instance, Chaitanya Bhagavat or in Nirotam Dash Thakur songs, which generally that would, that would be read out to people or they would sing, and they would people, uneducated people, village people in Bengal, not educated, they can't read and write, they would hear Chaitanya Bhagavat, they would sing the songs on the rota. The message is there. Just, the message is there. So it's not that that's neglected for anyone. It's not that just, okay, Leela, us. Just, that's it. We love Krishna Leela. But the, uh, the uh, Anartas, they have to be addressed also. And the artists, they come from ignorance, from which material desire. So all these things have to be discussed. Otherwise, we tend to think that what? A, well, I'm a devotee, so everything I do is spiritual. My guru's a liberated soul, so it's my great good fortune if I can offer my newly married wife to him first and then take her as prasada. People may think like that if they're not properly educated. Hare Krishna. Any question about this?
All right. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.